off today. Welcome to D18 Tonight. I'm your host, Crystal Paco. Joining us at studio are your senatorial candidates, Democrats La Sica Sill and Senator Joe S. Augustine and Republican Amanda Bloss. Thank you for joining us. We'll begin by each giving you 30 seconds to introduce yourself. So we'll start off with you, Lasia. I'm number three, lucky number three on the Democratic ticket running for senator. My platform is very simple. One, equality for all. Two, protect our environment, our sacred waters and valued lands. And three, responsible economy. I'm the only candidate that's uh, organized a nonprofit and taken a government agency to court. Um, I'm also the only candidate that, um, well, Please, I humbly ask for your vote. Number three, Lassia Casil. Thank you. Senator? Uh, th th thank you, uh, Crystal. I'd like to first um, thank the people of Guam for allowing me the opportunity to be to serve you as your senator in the 34th Guam legislature. Um, I have over 40 years of government service. I was a former police officer. I retired in the Army. I was on the Board of Education for six years and served as a chairman for three years. I was also a criminal tax investigated with Department of Revenue and Taxation, and, and lastly, I was the Acting Compliance uh, Supervisor. Thank you. And Amanda. Thank you, Crystal. Half a day, everyone. My name is Amanda Bloss, and I am number 19 on the Republican ballot. I've spent the last three years dedicating uh, my time and my life to government service, and at this point in my life, I've decided I want to take a new, a new journey to public service, which is in the legislature. So I do humbly ask for your vote and your support this election. So some of you already kind of touched on it, but for the first question, what is your educational background and community service organizations or projects that you've been involved in to improve our island? Let's start off with you since you already started that, Senator. Well, uh, Crystal, um, nonprofit organization, you know, I'm, I'm part of the uh, five different motorcycle clubs. You know, we got the Veterans of Guam Motorcycle Club, we have the Cello Ship, we have the Harley Owners Group, we have the Guam Hogs. And we have, we have uh, another group, of, I'm just trying to remember the name, kind of nervous at this time, but <laughs> other nonprofit, I'm also part of the Jigu uh, uh, Goodwill Spirit uh, Association of Jigu. I'm also part of the uh, Freemasonry here in Guam, the Masonic. I'm also a member of the uh, Domino Lux International. So um, what was the other part of that question? Well, you're out of time. Okay, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> you're a very busy man, obviously. Lassier? Um, well, I think the most significant um, community involvement is the nonprofit I started three years ago called Save Southern Guam. Um, uh, we established that to fight irresponsible development here on the island, and recently we took um, the Guam Land Use Commission to court for abusing their power. And this past Thursday, we actually uh, won a victory against that, and we had the permits for the, the Pago Bay Resort um, pulled. So I'm quite happy about that. Thank you. Last but not least, Amanda. Sure. So currently I'm working on my doctorate in public administration. Prior to that, I received my Master of Public Administration from Yoji and my bachelor's from University of Portland. I've been a long time youth leader at the Manila Church. Um, I believe that youth are definitely our future and it's important that we provide them with the support and services they need. And I believe the Manila Church youth group, MAGIC, which is Manhoban and God in Christ, definitely provides that. Um, I'm also volunteering with the Commission on Decolonization, which is where I spent the last 15 months of my government service. Obviously, all very, very busy people. While we, oh, we already have a question from Cherry Uggen. She asks, what will you do to make GMH solvent? Amanda, let's start with you. Sure. So first of all, I do want to say kudos to the hardworking men and women of GMH. I know a lot of times we talk about everything that's going on and fail to recognize them. So kudos to them. Um, obviously, no matter what we say about the hospital, it is still our island's only public hospital. And that means ensuring that they have the proper funding as well as the resources that they need. Um, I would like to look at legislation that provides them with the resources. And I would like to see how technology can be helpful in that, especially in the billing areas. Okay, thank you so much. Senator, how would you fix GMH? Well, number one is we've got to take a look at the management. Because, you know, the folks that work at GMH, like, like you know, um, Amanda brought up, kudos to the employees. Because the doctors are doing a great job, all the employees there, all the way down to the security officer. They're doing a great job, but management plays a major role. Um, you know, if we fix management and then we get the IT involved, technology needs to improve. And then we've got to look at the funding source. Because, you know, that uh, way back when they had the compact impact, those patients are supposed to go to... Uh, naval hospital. So why don't we try to take a look at where that money's going and if, if we can't get that money then let's get the islands to give us some additional funding. 
Thank you so much, Senator. Lassia, same question. How would, what would you do for GMH? Sure. GMH is that hydra, you know, the nine-headed monster. So I think that we've got <laughs> yeah. to attack it from so many different angles. The first being um, definitely leadership. You know, um, they have failed. So first thing, we need to get them out. And secondly, we need to find a funding uh, source for them. And third, uh, you know, we need to um, talk about preventative uh, sort of uh, ways to um all right <laughs> it's okay thank you so much Lassie. Sure. another viewer submitted question <laughs> and i noticed hard. they always <laughs> submit their questions Stephen liz amaguin asks what are your plans to streamline our government Lassie, let's start with you streamlining the government what would you do um well we've got to take a look at first at um, the different agencies, perhaps, you know, c consolidating a lot of those. You know, I, I, I work with um, the Chamorro Village, and um, I've seen a lot of ineffective procedures, uh, you know, with the higher-ups in, in that. Um, also cutting some of the fat from um, the, uh, the executive branch. You know, we have a lot of uh, special assistants, um, and also definitely um, we've got to get that out there and collect you know some of those taxes that 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 haven't been um thank you so much last year senator what would you well, do to uh, streamline, on, on our streamlining government? the government number one uh we need to take a look at uh how many vacancies we've got and, and let's let's put a pause a halt or or just stop the the hiring of any additional employees so we can take a look at where the government's at and we need to focus on the three areas that the Organic Act requires us to focus on. Public health, which is the GMH, uh, public safety, and education. Once we focus on those three, then we can identify what other agencies need to continue and reduce uh, duplication of efforts. And thank you. Last but not least, Amanda, what would you do to streamline our government? You know, it's no secret that we're in a time where we have to do more with less. So definitely I would like to use technology for that. Um, you know, right now there can be numerous contracts and programs that the different agencies are all using, which adds up when you, when you think about it. So what I'd like to see is working with the Office of Technology to streamline so that all of our agencies are connected on one, one network and one program. I definitely think that's one way to streamline the government by making sure we are more efficient and more effective through one program, one source, where we're not paying for added costs of contracts and whatnot. That's definitely one way. Thank you so much. It's time for a break, but more D18 tonight. And don't forget, you can go online, Facebook Live, and ask your questions. Smiling is a natural response to joy, happiness, and excitement. Your smile reveals a lot about who you are. A healthy, beautiful smile can brighten your appearance and be an invitation to conversation and friendship. It is often one of the first things people notice about you. Now, thanks to the advancements in dentistry, you can have the smile you have always wanted, giving you an improved smile that looks and feels great. My silver fillings that I have, they're getting older in my mouth and I need to replace them. So I've started to do that and I've replaced them with the white fillings and I've had really great success with that. It looks good, they feel natural, and it kind of goes hand in hand with the bleaching. I want my, a white look all around my mouth. back to D18 tonight. We're taking your questions on Facebook Live. With us again in studio are your senatorial candidates, Lassie Castell, Senator Joseph Augustine, and Amanda Bloss. So let's go to our next question. Joy Charfres on Facebook Live asks us, do you think we should revisit voting on casino industry for Guam? Senator, let's start with, start with you. I'm going to say yes, we should re um, relook it. 
And the only reason why is because my understanding is in the previous election, it was about uh, it being specifically to the Greyhound. It wasn't open to the open market. So I'm just, I'm just going to say that it should be brought up to the vote of the people if we want to consider casino or any type of gambling. Okay. Thank you so much, Amanda. No, I remember this coming back in the vote back when it was called Prop A. I remember that. And I know there was a lot of uproar about what it could do to families, how it could hurt our island community. And I think that there's still things we need to consider today. I also know that we're in a time where we do need an infusion into our economy. And that's a big deal right now. So um, right now, I think for me, it's too early for me to say whether I support it or not. But I definitely like to look into it. And like I said, we have to think about how it will impact our island community in multiple ways, not just the economy and the economic value, but also how it could impact our families and our community. Lassie, again, the question is, do you think we should revisit voting on casino industry for Guam? You know, right now, I think that, you know, we're, we're in a, this desperate situation where, where we need to um, look for new funds. Um, to, to shorten this gap that we have. However, just looking to our neighbor to the north and seeing um, the effects that the, that the casino is having there in Saipan, um, I'm hesitant on, on visiting this, this subject. But, you know, if, if it's something that the people want, I think that, that we need to, to um, listen to them and, and hear them out. Thank you so much. This is a viewer submitted question from Romeo, Romeo Carlos. What do these candidates think about the current climate of corruption that has skewed opportunities for so many individuals and businesses on Guam? Amanda, let's start with you. Sure, so we know that corruption definitely influences public trust and that's a big deal. Um, so I do think that it needs to be addressed, needs to be taken care of, and there needs to be steps taken care of. Um, I don't know if there's enough legislation right now to let is in place right now to look at how to address corruption. And I think that might be something that needs to be revisited. Um, you know, being in the legislature doesn't mean just creating new laws. It also means revisiting laws. So if there are laws that are meant to address cor corruption right now, maybe we should relook at those considering there are new ways for corruption to occur um, in this new 21st century that we're in. Thank you so much, Amanda. Lassia, same question from Romeo Carlos. What do these candidates think about the current climate of corruption that has skewed opportunities for so many individuals and businesses on Guam? Well, just looking at the case with the Pago Bay Resort, you know, the people didn't want that, but the GLUC went ahead and gave the, this company um, the variance on, on, on the, the height restriction. So, um, you know, I've taken action against, against abuse of power in, in the government, and that's something that I want to continue to do in the, in the 35th legislature. So uh, it's definitely something I'm going to tackle uh, when I get in there. Thank you so much, Lassie. Same question to you, Senator. Well, you know, um, Krista, when we're dealing with corruption, and that means that there was a crime committed. The Attorney General needs to uh, step in and investigate it. And, and if any of the federal agencies need to get involved, then get involved. I mean, we don't need to have to come up with the excuse of uh, he's, he's stealing money from the government or he's, he's robbing the poor for the wealthy. If there's a crime committed, then investigate the Attorney General, investigate the FBI, investigate the Guam Police Department. Let's do the investigation and let's just come to conclusion of if you're going to get prosecuted or not. Thank you so much, Senator. Again, this is a viewer submitted question. Jay Yayo Naran asks, what's your view on recreational marijuana? Of course, this question gets asked every episode of D18. Lassie, what are your thoughts on recreational marijuana? Um, well, I support uh, medicinal marijuana for sure. Um, I've lived in California and I've seen the how uh, uh, recreational marijuana has um, benefited the state. So I think it's definitely something that we should look into. I support it. Uh, when I lived in California, um, you know, I, I partook in, in medicinal marijuana for some, for some pains that I had. So it's definitely something that I support and I think that it could benefit our island. Thank you so much, Lassia. Senator, how do you feel about recreational marijuana? Well, you know, Crystal, I, I, I support the medicinal because that was voted by the people. You know, I introduced a bill that uh, allowed them to get their business license so they can move forward the medicinal. But when it comes to the recreational marijuana, I have to take a look at what happened in the past. When you remember when the U.S. Congress lifted the prohibition on alcohol, the people of the world did not know what the problems that alcohol would cause. So we need to get an education program going on the, on the use of recreational, and we've got to make sure that there's enough uh, regulations involved on the management and the use of, of, of recreational marijuana. 
Thank you so much, Senator. Same question for you, Amanda. Sure. So we know that the voters obviously said um, what they thought when it came to medicinal marijuana. And at this time, we still haven't been able to start the medicinal marijuana program. Um, before we look at um, recreational marijuana, I definitely think it's important that we address the inefficiencies of the, of the medicinal marijuana program and address that um, before going on to recreational marijuana. But I think that's a possibility for another vote similar to how we did the medicinal marijuana vote. Okay, thank you so much. We're going to take a quick breather. That means a break. More questions still to come on D18 tonight. Mary and March said they'll meet us there at 8 o'clock, okay? What are you doing, hon? I gotta be the faster draw tonight. They beat us to the bill last time, and we missed out on a 3% cash back. Hmm. I got the skills to pay the bills. This summer, the Bank of Guam Visa credit card gives you 3% cash back on all purchases. It's an offer so good, you'll be competing to pay the bill. Your check. The Visa credit card with 3% cash back this June, July, and August. Only at Bank of Guam. Terms and conditions apply. Bank of Guam, the People's Bank, member FDIC. Where will your sip take you? You're going to need more than an oil change. Okay. Okay. Try our new slushies at McDonald's. Tropic Twist, Blue Raspberry, and Cherry Limey. Perfect for summer for a limited time. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's, offers fully covered loading and unloading area with individual pin-coated gate and door access. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. Hoffaday and welcome back. Let's jump back into our next round of Facebook Live questions. Stephen Blake asks, our laws for local fishermen is controlled by different agencies and they don't make any sense. How can our senators come down with one plan and one set of laws for our fish, fishermen? Let's start with you, Amanda. Sure. So um, on my recent trip to the United Nations, I got to talk to the Attorney General from American Samoa, who just won a large fishing case for American Samoa. And he honestly, he taught me a lot about how their culture influenced that, that case and how they require that their legislation reflect their culture. And I think that's definitely something that we need to look at, is looking at the laws and looking at the plan to incorporate our culture. That's definitely something important because aquaculture and fishing was such a big thing for our island. Um, I definitely think that we should relook at the legislation. Like I said, being a senator is not only about making new laws, it's about revisiting old ones that don't necessarily apply. And I think that means bringing in multiple agencies who are involved in the regulations for fishing, definitely, including our fishermen, of course. Thank you so much, Amanda. Same question for you, uh, Senator. Well, you know, when, it, when we're talking about the fishing industry, um, the people of Guam has to be involved in this. And, and when you mention that there's many agencies that are involved in it, it, there should be only one. It should be the Department of Agriculture, and only them, and then from there, we need to get the, the total input from our, our fishermen. You know, because most of the, the folks that are getting arrested right now are all my family and my friends. And I'm like, ay, malingo atulay. No, we need to get the fish, we need to bring back the culture of allowing our people to fish. Thank you so much, Senator Lasia. So I, I come from a fishing family. I, I, my grandmother and I used to go out and, and, and pull in the, help pull in the atulay. Um, so so I, I empathize with the fishermen. Um, I was also recently in Palau and I met with the, the director of the Protected Areas Network and we spoke about some of their fishing practices. And I would like to bring in some of those ideas um, here. And I think it's important that we do sit down with the stakeholders, you know, all the fishermen, and, and um, you know, look at these laws, relook at these laws, and, and try to come up with something that, that, you know, benefits everyone. Thank you so much. We have another viewer submit a question from Christine Stephanie who asks, do you think government or social nonprofit organizations, including the church, should step up to social issues like homelessness on Guam? Let's start with you, Senator. Homelessness. Yeah. I, 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 under, I think the question is just about homelessness in general. Well, we, we, you know that we have West Care that's involved right now with, with the homeless veterans. Now, yes, 
uh, all the nonprofit organizations, such as the churches, and I'm, I'm almost sure most of them are involved. Because I know the Catholic churches, because my, my parents are involved when they come with the homeless uh, feeding. So when it comes to the shelter, I think the government needs to step in too, because that's the people of Guam. And, and I know that uh, there, there's homes that they've done rehabilitation so they can take care of the homeless folks. Last year, your thoughts on homelessness on Guam? Uh, you know, I moved back five years ago, and I was really surprised to see the amount of homelessness um, here on Guam. And I, I agree with uh, Senator San Augustine that, that we need to, you know, the government needs to step in and maybe, maybe help out, you know, and work with the churches to, to, to resolve this problem. Thank you so much, Lassia. Last but not least, Amanda, yeah, homelessness on Guam. Sure. So a couple of years ago, I actually participated in the homeless count, and I was awestruck to see how many people were truly homeless on Guam. I don't think we really see it, apparently, in our daily lives, but when you go and do the count, you got to see just how, how many homeless people are on Guam, and it, it, it did break my heart, and I'm going to be honest about that. You know, and for me, I don't think social issues like homelessness are just the government. I think it's, an, it's a whole community issue that we all need to, do, need to work together to take care of, you know? I think we come from an island that is all about taking care of each other, and I think that extends to homelessness, too. So let's bring together the government, nonprofit organizations, the churches, and our people just to address this together. That's where I think it should be. It should be everybody together. Thank you. Juan Borja asks, raising revenues through taxation is inevitable. If you had to raise taxes, would you tax the business community first or would you tax the working class first? Lassie, your thoughts? No taxes. No. <laughs> um, uh, this is something that we're working on right now. And <laughs> if given an ultimatum, I think that, that we, I'd have to look towards the business community. Um, you know, I'm from a working class family and I, they're overburdened right now. You know, we, we keep putting this burden on, on those people and people can't, you know, they're not able to go out and buy food and, you know, get to work. And so I think I would look towards the business community. Thank you so much, Lassie. Amanda, same question. Sure. So obviously if we tax the businesses, those businesses will eventually have to pass it on to the people as well. Um, so it's kind of a double-edged sword either way. Um, but of course, if I were looking at taxes, I would try to do it, avoid it to affecting our families, but I don't see if there's really a way without that. But you're right that we do have to increase revenues. But I'd also like to look at other ways to increase revenues. For example, government facilities that we are no longer using. Is there a possibility to rent it? Is there a possibility to rent it to our business owners? And that will bring in more cash. I think we also need to look at creative ways to bring in funding to the government in addition to the taxes. Thank you so much, Amanda. Senator, how do you feel about that? Oh, you know, when we're dealing with taxes, number one, uh, you remember that I introduced the sales tax, and that didn't work. We got a repeal because money was being spent elsewhere versus it should have been spent on the, on the agencies that needed the money. So as far as taxing um, businesses, the money, the, the uh, businesses will pass on that expense. So when we, got, when we take a look at it, and you know, mentioned earlier uh, the first question about streamlining the government, let's take a, look, take a look at what it's costing to keep the government running, and then let's reduce from there. And if we don't have to introduce taxes, don't introduce taxes, and, and I think we'll, we'll everything will be okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Stay tuned. More on D18 tonight continues after the break. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Big Fries took everything from me to keep my father from exposing the truth about Nacho Fries. Rebellion is forming. Flip the switch. Is there anything that tastes better than this? Revenge. The future is Nacho Fries! Looks like you guys could use a hand. A strong economy depends on a strong middle class. Businesses need help to survive in these tough times and new industries are needed. 
As your governor, I will propose tax cuts for small businesses. We will streamline government operations to create a more business-friendly environment. We will invest in infrastructure and in our people by expanding opportunities to learn much-needed trades. I'm in to help get us there, and I humbly ask for your vote. This message. Summer is here. And at Cars Plus and Mighty, that means big savings. During our summer clearance event, right now, save up to $8,000 on select 2018 Ram 1500 SLT Crew Cab. Or save $3,250 on a 2018 Chrysler Pacifica. Voted Family Car of the Year. 1.99 APR financing is available for qualified buyers. Plus, buy today and receive a Cars Plus value card, where you get 21 cents off per gallon at all Shell stations. Don't miss our summer clearance event. Going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Welcome back to D18 tonight. We're getting close to wrapping up our show. And up next is our exclusive show, The After Party with Sabrina Salas, Matt Tanani, and Chris Barnett, and our analysts, Victoria LG, Bobby Shringy, and Cliff Guzman. But first, our last round of questions for our candidates. This question comes from Alyssa Eclavea. She's a good friend of KUAM. She asks, oftentimes the people of Guam have to fly out to receive many services unavailable to us. What can you do about these hardships? What happens to those who can't afford to get the care their child desperately needs? Amanda, may we start with you? You know, I actually had this conversation with somebody I, I really respect, and one of the things that came up was organ transplants. When you look at your license on Guam, it says you're an organ donor or not, but there's no facility or no expertise for organ, do organ donors. And that's one of the things that we face. And just from somebody who has a family member who did have to go off island, spent nine months off island, it, it really took its toll financially and emotionally on my family. So I would definitely like to look at legislation that will help allow bring new services to Guam. Definitely. I think that's a big important thing. You know, it shouldn't be that we have all these medical fundraisers because we can't afford, our families can't afford to go out there. We need to work on bringing these, these resources to Guam. So it's very close to my heart. So that's something I'd like to look into. Thank you so much, Madison. Same question to you, Senator. Well, you know, Crystal, one of the things we, we got to focus on is, number one, is fixing GMH. And open the doors to allow the other experts, the medical uh, experts that are out there in the market. Because there are many of them that have passed through Guam. They try to get a license in Guam. They couldn't get one. They ended up in California. And where do all our patients go, our people of Guam? They go to California. Mm -hmm. What we need to try to like, um, have a magnet to bring all our specials to Guam so that we can have it on Guam, but that's after we fix GMH, because GRMC is doing a great job. They're bringing ex experts here. They bring the specialties here. We need to build that and build up GMH. Thank you so much, Senator Lassia. Same question. Sure, um, thank you. You know, I've had many family members have to go off island, you know, for, for medical services. And I, I myself have had to go off medical, um, off island for medical services. But I, I agree with Senator um, Sanagasine here. We need to focus on GMH. And, and funding and, and finding the resources, you know, bringing them in to provide for our people, the specialists. I have friends that work at GMRC, GMRC and, um, you know, they're doing great as well. Um, so I, I think we need to, to look inward and, and focus again on, on, on uh, GMH. Guys, we're almost done. The last question before our closing. This question comes from Patrick Andrew Guzman, who asks, do you support repealing the pay raises? Senator. Which pay raise are you referring to? Because, uh, you know, on the third floor of Guam legislature, we repealed our, our pay raise for the senators and the governor. So which specific pay raise is he referring to? Because I'm, I'm actually looking forward, and I'm hoping one of my colleagues, if not, I'll introduce and I'll ask Senator Speaker Cruz to pass the bill to me and let's raise the minimum wage. Because, you know, when, when the Trump Act went into place, it reduced the taxes on corporate. And I, I don't think we've seen enough uh, corporates... Um, passing on their savings on to, to their employees and to the community. So it's kind of like we're trying to find a way to take a look at that and repeal a pay raise. What part of pay raise are you referring to? Okay, thank you so much, Senator Amanda. Same question about pay raises, repeal sure. pay so raises. I'd like to echo the same sentiments. I know that there was a repeal of the pay raises um, with this past legislature. And I think that there's so many people who are running. I mean, we have 19 on the Republican, I believe 20 on the Democrat that's side. Great. It's an indication that pay wasn't the motivation. And I think that's great that we have public servants and individuals in the community who are willing to give back to their island like that. And so I, for me personally, I don't believe the pay repeal influenced my decision to run for senator. And I believe all of us who are sitting here today, it's in our heart to be running for, for office and to be serving our island. So um, when it comes to the pay, pay repeal, it already did happen. And that hasn't wavered us in serving our island. Okay, 
Thank you so much, Amanda. Lassie, same question. Yeah, I, I, I think I have to agree with uh, my two um, co cohorts here. Um, for myself personally, it's definitely not, not, not an incentive. I, you know, I, I've been an advocate for, for tomorrow land rights for several years now, and um, that's what I want to continue doing in this legislature. So, again, I'm, I'm not quite sure what the question is, um, you know, which pay raises. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And the final question. Our closing remarks, your last chance to talk to the viewers and ask them for your vote. Amanda, let's start with you. Sure. Once again, my name is Amanda Bloss, and I am number 19 on the Republican ballot. I do humbly ask for your vote and support. Um, I ask that you support me in helping our government move forward with technology into the 21st century to promote efficiency, effectiveness, and transparency. But most of all, I do ask that you get up and go vote. Voting is your right, and I do hope that you give me one of your votes, but please make sure you do go vote and make change in our island. Thanks so much, Amanda. Senator. Oh, um, well, Crystal, you know, I'm number 16, and, and a lot of my uh, staff tell me that's sweet 16. I'm on the ballot on the Democratic side. Uh, I'd like to thank first the people of Guam again for allowing me to serve in the 34th Guam legislature, and I humbly ask for your vote of confidence for, to continue serving you in the 30, 35th legislature. There's still a lot of work to be done. Thank you so much, Senator. Lasia. Hafadei Guam, my name is Lassia Kassil, and I am lucky number three on the ballot, and I'm humbly asking for your vote um, to elect me to be your voice in the 35th Guam legislature. I would like to continue my fight, fighting for Chamorro land rights, as I have been doing in the courts, and um, yes, um, please, thank you so much, and thank you, Crystal, for allowing us to be here. Yes. Thank you again. That's Lost Castillo. That's Senator Justin Augustine. And this is Amanda Bloss. Best of luck to all three of you. We encourage you to go on our Facebook page to answer your que their questions again, because the viewers are still have the questions. So you could still come online and answer those questions. Stay tuned. The after party is next. Furniture provided by Furniture Kathy Style. Men's wardrobe by Royal Bix.